Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. A tremendously important project is underway in East Africa, which affects such herd animals as the fringe-eared oryx, one of the larger of the antelopes. The huge Cape buffalo, long considered one of Africa's most dangerous animals. And the eland, largest of all African antelopes. The project is designed to utilize and preserve wild herd animals. First they are captured, then domesticated, and finally actually herded on great expanses of unfenced lands, just as cattle are, but lands to which cattle cannot adapt. The project, conducted by private enterprise, has the cooperation of the Kenya government and ensures the survival of plain species and provides vital protein for increasing human populations. It is occurring on the vast Galana Ranch, located here in Kenya, Africa, between Tsavo National Park East and the Coastal Belt. That's where man is improving both his lot and that of many wild animals through the project we call Galana Experiment. Flying from Nairobi to the Galana Ranch, my pilot and guide is Martin Anderson, one of the ranch owners. Below us, this vast property has well over a million acres and many elephant herds like this one and numerous other wild animals. Martin's dream has been to utilize wildlife as a renewable resource. The principal water source for the ranch is the Galana River, which forms the southern boundary. Water is crucial for cattle ranching, but not so necessary in the ranching of herd animals indigenous to the many types of terrain the sprawling ranch includes. The banks of the Galana River support a great variety of wildlife. Among the animals found near the river are water bucks, which prefer a moist river valley habitat. During the ground tour of the Galana Ranch, we will be seeing many indigenous wild animals, some which can be domesticated and others which cannot. The water buck is one of the antelope species common here. Because of the inedible quality of its meat, however, the highly attractive water buck is not being domesticated. Another of the undomesticated but protected animals here is the elephant. Many hundreds of these tuskers roam at will on Galana Ranch. Our land here also has some of the rare antelope species called the Garanuk. Its long neck is a distinct asset in feeding since its principal food is browse, the tender leaves and buds of bushes and low trees. Garanook may offer a possibility for domestication experiments in the future, but now they're simply wild animals here, timid and quick to take flight. We still have some distance to go before reaching the area where the wild game is being domesticated. In the meantime, we'll have a chance to see some of the other wildlife living here. There's a bat-eared fox, a common small predator on the ranch. It has evidently taken cover because of the approach of a much larger predator. Lions are the largest and most powerful of the carnivores here, and they sometimes prey upon the eland. However, this largest of all the African antelopes is rarely taken unaware and mostly stays out of reach. At first, we worried that lions would prey upon the domesticated herd animals, but that just hasn't been the case. Lions don't usually care to approach the animals being herded by men. Up ahead of us is a herd of fringe-eared oryx, one of the antelope being used in the Galani experiment, but this herd is wild. We'll see domesticated ones later in the area of the ranch where the domestication experiment is occurring. This area where we're stopping is called Lolly Hills. 
And here we'll see some of the huge Cape buffalo native to the area. They're much more adapted to this arid country than cattle, and so are part of the Galani experiment, despite some problems with them because of their aggressiveness, especially among bulls. The principal herd can better be seen from a foot in a natural basin ahead of us. It is quite apparent, considering their present abundance, what a valuable resource the many buffalo herds like this one could be. Much depends, of course, on whether or not these large animals can be domesticated to the point where herdsmen can control them. Galana Ranch and the Kenya government have devoted a million and a half acres to a research project here to accomplish two things. First of all, to ensure the fact that the vast numbers of African Plains game that are here survive. And secondly, to ensure the production of more protein for a growing Kenya population. When we started here, the land was largely uninhabited except for an occasional African elephant hunter. We commenced our research uh, with an attempt to domesticate uh, animals that nature placed on the land the idea that uh, they'd be best suited for the habitat here. We've been immensely successful with the fringe-eared oryx. I'd like to show you what we've done and how we've done it. Some of the wild herd animals are doing exceptionally well in the Galani experiment, and they do not compete with the domestic cattle raised here which are not so well adapted to the drier portions of this habitat. Over 20,000 head of Boran cattle are presently on Galana Ranch, with expansion projected to a maximum of 26,000. Percentage-wise, to total body weight, cattle do not provide as much lean meat as do the indigenous game species. Cattle need better grazing conditions and cannot adapt to the tick and tsetse fly problem. Cattle also require up to 75% more water than antelope and much more intensive health care. The marginal land where cattle cannot survive well supports many other species being experimented with here, such as camels. Though not themselves indigenous to this area, Camels are, nevertheless, an excellent potential as a meat source on lands where cattle simply cannot survive. Heretofore, especially in northern Africa, camels have been used essentially as mounts, beasts of burden and providers of milk. Now, however, we may be on the threshold of a whole new use for this valuable animal. Calves are being born to the camels here, and our herd shows promise of becoming a major factor in meat production. Obviously, they are far more successful than cattle at surviving where water supplies are limited. However, even more than with camels, the Galana experiment is concerned with herd animals indigenous to this terrain, such as the eland. Here's one of our experimental herds. We now have on this ranch several herds of tame eland. In some areas of Africa, eland have domesticated nicely, but they've been a disappointment here. They're selective browsers, tending to spread out and move fast when feeding, and this makes them more difficult to herd than grazers. Our most striking success has been with the oryx we have domesticated here. These grazers herd quite well and get most of their water needs from vegetation, going as long as 25 days without drinking. It's not a very long drive to where we have established what we call a boma, comparable to a cattle corral. The boma is where the herd animals are kept at night for protection. 
Here, too, all the different species receive the same type of taming process. At the moment, we're concentrating on oryx domestication. The capture of wild herd animals and their taming here at the Boma has been under the supervision of Brian Heath. He can explain what happens after the captured oryx have been temporarily kept in pens and well fed until they've been thoroughly calmed down. That's when they are ready for the more advanced domestication training process. These oryx are going to be let out into a small wired in enclosure. From there they move into a slightly larger enclosure and once they have settled down, they will be moved into a 100-acre paddock where they spend anything up to three or four months. And once they have become completely tame, they will be let out. At first, the pens in this boma are lined with grass so the oryx do not see humans too often. After a week, the grass is removed and the penned oryx can then become accustomed to humans. Soon they become so well adapted to the presence of men that the proximity of fencing becomes unnecessary. Once adapted to herding, the tamed animals are absorbed into the domesticated herds. This is the fringe-eared oryx, and it is proven to have more potential as a herded animal in a semi-arid environment than any other species domesticated here. These oryx will be managed in the traditional African manner, being herded out to graze during the day and brought back to the boma at night for protection from predators or poachers. Now we can go to see another study in progress where we're constantly learning more about herd animals we've domesticated and exactly what they need for good health and productivity. Warthogs are just one of the numerous wild animals on Galana Ranch, which are not domesticated, but contribute to the overall natural balance. Here we've come to one of the herds of domesticated oryx, where their feeding habits and behavior are being studied by our resident scientist, Mark Stanley Price. At present, he is timing and observing certain behavioral aspects of the oryx and recording this data on tape for later analysis. Hello, Mark. Tell me something of the scope of your scientific investigations. Well, I've been doing two things. First of all, I've been looking at the feeding ecology and nutrition of the domestic oryx, comparing them with sheep and cows, measuring how much they eat, how efficiently they digest it, how much water they drink, under carefully controlled conditions in pens. We've then attempted to repeat the same observations with the animals at free range outdoors. What I'm doing here is looking at the social behavior now of these domestic oryx to see how the herds are organized from the point of view of management. We want to know how many males, how many females, and how many young ones we must run in a herd for it to be a social stable unit from which we have no animals running off. And what I'm doing here has, in fact, allowed us to improve our management techniques quite considerably. Now we'll head out to observe the way we actually capture the wild oryx at another location on Galana Ranch. The capture teams were now preparing to round up more of the wild herd animals for domestication. This time, a herd of fringe-eared oryx. To do this, a large trap is constructed in a funnel shape. Wild oryx will be driven through this opening here, called Gate 1, comprised of fabric fencing lying on the ground, which is lifted into place after the animals pass. As they enter the more restricted area here, they pass Gate 2, which is drawn closed behind them. They are then screened in temporary corrals with the healthiest specimens kept and the remainder released. A long drive across the Galana Ranch has brought Martin Anderson and me to where the Oryx capture will occur. 
Far ahead of us, we can see the wild herd, which was initially located from an aeroplane. They've gradually been maneuvered to reasonable proximity of the trap, so the chase, when it occurs, will be short. From our prearranged site, we watch the chase as it begins. As often happens, the herd runs at first in the direction away from the trap, but that has been anticipated. Now the capture vehicles will attempt to turn the leaders of the herd. They've managed to turn the herd and now they have them heading directly toward the mouth of the funnel trap. For the first time, we can see that there are some zebra mixed in with the oryx. But they will soon be forced by the vehicles to break away from the oryx herd. They are approaching the trap now. Martin is able to confirm that they have just entered the first gate of the trap and are now running parallel with the far wall. The crucial first part of the capture is successfully accomplished as the capture team starts raising the curtain of fencing to confine them within the expansive funnel trap area. That's our signal to drive through gate one before it's closed all the way. The trap is huge and they're still running toward the second gate but it's always more difficult when this point is reached and the distance between the walls of the funnel trap is narrowing. Not unexpectedly, the Oryx suddenly realize that they are being trapped. They've just now entered gate two, and now the most important thing is to get the gate closed before the herd reverses direction. It's too late. They've completely reversed direction. Fortunately, the animals are still contained by gate one and will have to be turned once again toward the smaller area behind gate two. They're turning them again, and now the capture team will repeat the process of driving them into the narrow part of the funnel trap. By this time, the initial burst of speed has diminished, and they're slowing. That makes them more controllable. Now the herd is passing through the second gate again, and though one or two might break away, the main part of the herd shows no immediate inclination to turn back. The heavy fabric fencing called a Hessian curtain is drawn closed behind them. As Martin goes to assist with the gate closing, I'll observe the more confined operation from here. The captured oryx are slowing down even more and bunching at the far end. 
They now have no place to go except into the entrance of one of the separating pens. Martin and I can now move inside to observe the final steps. Not all of these animals will be kept, only those in excellent health and two years old. As soon as they're tightly confined, the animals are isolated in separate pens and closely inspected. Two-year-olds in good health make the best breeding stock and will be domesticated in the Galana experiment. The others, having failed to meet the standards, are singled out one by one into a release chute. And then the chute is opened and they're free to escape and rejoin the wild oryx on the ranch. My visit to the Galana Ranch has made me aware of some new concepts of land use in the African setting. The careful, humane capture of large native herbivores is masterfully accomplished. The gradual habituation of them so that they can be herded similarly to domesticated cattle and the research into the behavior and needs of the animals as a semi-controlled species is an example of excellent land use. It is good conservation. The process of domesticating wild animals in East Africa provides two important benefits. In recent years, many of the wild herd species have diminished in population due to poaching and human encroachment on natural habitat. Now, such animals as the fringe-eared oryx and others on Galana Ranch are being domesticated in their own habitat. Here, where they are safer, more productive, and their existence assured, they provide a continuing and growing benefit for man. Other governments might well consider following Kenya's example. It improves man's own lot and may help prevent extinction of many herd animals of the wild kingdom.